Charlie Horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still there? Hey! Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. Cheerios, Cheerios. That's Cheerios, all right. The nourishing old cereal that's shaped like little letter O's. The ready-to-eat cereal with a wonderful toasted oat flavor. What's more, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. That's right. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. And these good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So try Cheerios, the famous oat cereal that needs no cooking. And soon you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. After the massacre of General Custer's army at the Little Bighorn, Sitting Bull and his Indian followers fled to Canada. Four years later, an agreement was negotiated with General Miles. The Indians agreed to return to the United States and surrender, with the understanding that they would be taken to reservations. Colonel Brothers was in command of the Cavalry Regiment, camped near the border between Canada and the Montana Territory, to meet the Indians and take them into custody. The colonel was at work in his tent when a young civilian entered. Colonel Brothers, mm. I'm Todd Raleigh. Oh, yes, the cub reporter. How are you? Glad to know you, sir. I just arrived in camp. I was told to report to you. I've been expecting you. Your letter and one from your newspaper arrived yesterday. I understand this is your first big assignment. Yes, sir. And I've got to make good. I hope you do. If there's anything I can do to help, please let me know. My aide will escort you to your tent. Thank you, sir. Um, do you think Sitting Bull will keep his word and bring the remnants of his army across the border? Oh, we've no way of knowing. Well, my paper instructed me to send the story by telegraph. We want to score a beat by publishing the news ahead of all the other newspapers. The nearest Western Union office is in Uniontown. That's a long way. I can ride there in one day on a good horse. And I have a good horse. You have competition, Raleigh. Another newspaper man arrived yesterday. Oh, who is he? The noted war correspondent, Jay Collins. Collins of the Dispatch? Yes. That horse killer. Why do you say that? He killed a horse of a competing newspaper man so he'd be first in reporting the story of Lee's surrender at Appomattox. Hmm. He'll do anything to score a scoop. Unfortunately, Raleigh, you and he will be quartered in the same tent. Oh. I, uh, I think he's in River Bend now. He said something about going there to rent a strong horse. He's planning to ride to Uniontown to telegraph his story now. I'll have to get there ahead of him to score a beat. Probably. It'll be a race to the Western Union Station. A race to the wire. Tom Raleigh was thoughtful as he was escorted to his quarters in the camp. Meanwhile, in the nearby town of River Bend, Jay Collins, the horse killer, sat in a cafe with two hard-faced men known as Shag Morris and Greasy Smith. Collins was saying, The Indians crossed the border. After that, I, I want to beat the other report of the telegraph office in Uniontown. I want you two to capture Todd Ross. Yes. Why? Pretend you must take him for an outlaw with a price on his head. Hold him prisoner while you presumably communicate with the marshal here in River Bend. Hold him for how long? Till the day after Sitting Bull surrender. Then let him escape. 
By that time, I'll have telegraphed my story from Union Town. We can shoot him. I don't want gunplay. But I've no objection if you give him a beating. Where will we find him alone? On the plateau northwest from the camp. I'll see that he's there tomorrow morning. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and Tonto brought their horses to a halt near a dense forest on the plateau near the boundary line. From there, they could see the tents and horses in the cavalry camp in a valley to the southeast. And they could see the Canadian mountains north of the border. We see a long way from here. Yes. If Indians come, we see them long before them reach border. Tonto, ride north until you meet the Indians. Find out if they're coming to surrender, or if they intend to break their word to General Miles and fight. Ah. I'll camp just inside that forest and watch the Canadian mountaintops for a smoke signal. Me let you know. One column of smoke will mean that all is well. But if I see two columns, I'll warn Colonel Brothers to be ready to fight. Uh, me start right now. I'll be watching for your signal, Tonto. Adios. Adios. Get him up to the top. That night, the Lone Ranger camped alone while Tonto rode to meet the Indians. And in the press tent of the cavalry camp, Jay Collins pretended that heavy drinking had made him friendly and confidential. He seemed to be talking unwittingly and divulging a secret when he told Todd Raleigh where he intended to go on the plateau for advance information about the Indians. The next morning, Jay feigned sleep, but chuckled when he saw the younger reporter leaving camp. <laughs> he swallowed the bait. He's heading northwest for the high ground, and he's due for a surprise. Easy, easy, boy. After riding several miles, Todd reached the rocky plateau that Collins had described. He was a long way from the cavalry's observation post, but near the woods where the Lone Ranger was camped, when two men suddenly appeared from behind a boulder and fired into the air. Ladies! Oh, hold there! Get smart and keep your hands high or we'll blow your head off. <clears throat> Just a hold up. You know more about hold ups than we do. You ornery gunslinger. I'm no gunslinger. Tell that to the marshal. You're a crook named Gunner Martin. You're wrong. I have credentials to prove yeah, it. You probably stole them. Nah, he's not packing a gun. Should we tie his hands? No. I've got a score to settle with him first. He slugged a friend of mine. And I'm going to pay him back double. The young reporter was staggered by the blow to the chin. Such unfair treatment was something new. He was enraged and fought back furiously. Hey, will you? Oh, Shag. Oh, so you want to fight? Here's another. Oh, help you, Shag. We'll fix him. Shag and Greasy gave Todd a merciless beating, wholly unaware of the lone ranger who raced from the woods on the great horse, too. Uh, uh, he's down. We knocked him out. Kick him in the ribs for good measure. Yeah. As Greasy drew back his foot to kick the unconscious man, the Lone Ranger fired. Hey. Greasy spun and fell to the ground as a bullet struck the calf of his upraised leg. Oh, oh. Jack saw the newcomer and reached for his gun. As it cleared the holster, the masked man fired again. Hey. The bullet smashed Jack's weapon. As the Lone Ranger dismounted, Greasy, sprawling on the ground, drew his gun. Ah, you mad get your... oh. It was the masked man's gun that spoke. Oh. For the third time, a silver bullet found the mark. Greasy howled with a pain that stabbed his arm when his pistol was blasted from his hand. The Lone Ranger holstered his coat. Now you're both disarmed. This is none of your business. I'm making it my business. I saw you beating that man. You mess cook. I don't like the way you fight. You need lessons. No, no, wait. Listen, whoever you are. I'll start with you. Stop. I've only begun. Greasy, help me. Greasy had no desire to fight the masked man and share the punishment that Shag was receiving. He hesitated but an instant, then hobbled to his horse and painfully mounted as the Lone Ranger delivered a final blow. Now this will end the lesson. The masked man glanced at Shag, who lay on the ground unconscious, to Greasy riding away, then turned his attention to Todd Raleigh. It was early afternoon of the same day. Jay Collins sat in the headquarters tent with Colonel Brothers. He was saying, I have no idea where Todd Raleigh is. I haven't seen him since last night. Mm. I overslept this morning, you see, and I... Colonel Brothers? Yes, Todd Raleigh was just brought into camp. He's badly hurt. What happened to him? I don't know, sir. The masked man took him to the doctor. Masked man? Colonel Brothers. Oh, here he is. Hey, that mask. What does this mean? Please read this letter, Colonel Brothers. It's from General Miles, for whom I served as scout. It explains my mask. May I see the letter? No. Aren't you Jay Collins? Yes. Who are you? The colonel is reading the letter that identifies me. Yes, indeed it does. 
I'm glad to know you. Who is he, Colonel? I'm not at liberty to say. What about Raleigh? Tell me what happened. I was camped in the woods on the plateau when I heard gunshots and rode into the open to investigate. I saw two men some distance away giving the third man a merciless beating. I hurried there and interfered. The Lone Ranger told of the encounter and finished by saying... Raleigh regained consciousness for only a short time. He suspects the two men were hired to beat him. Hired by a rival reporter who wants a scoop. Why are you looking at me? Raleigh mentioned your name, Collins. If you or Todd Raleigh make any charges against me, you'd better be able to prove them. No charges have been made yet. Colonel. Yes? I'd like to speak to you about Todd Raleigh. You should be taken by ambulance to the Army Base Hospital at Uniontown. Very well, Doctor. Do all that's necessary. But he refuses to let us move him to the hospital at Uniontown. He wants to be here when Sitting Bull arrives. I'll talk to him. Why don't you offer to write his story? And put it on the wire from Uniontown. That, Collins, is just what I intend to do. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now, free stamp offer from Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal. Free for one special Cheerios box top, a 64-page guide packed with information on stamp collecting, Plus ten genuine foreign stamps to start your collection. Begin the world's most thrilling hobby, collecting stamps from strange, exciting, faraway lands all over the globe. You'll want this handy 1955 stamp guide for your very own. It contains many pages in full color, gives you tips on how to collect stamps, how to start your own stamp club, and even includes a whole illustrated section on U.S. stamps. Get your 64-page guide plus ten stamps free for only one special Cheerios box top. And on the back of the same Cheerios package, find still another offer. 300 foreign stamps plus stamp album for only 25 cents in box top. All stamps supplied by world's largest stamp firm, H.E. Harrison Company of Boston. Act now. Look for the Cheerios package with the free stamp offer on front. to continue. When Shag was released, he went directly to Riverbend, where he found Greasy seated at a corner table in the cafe. Later, Jay Collins joined them. The horse killer told of the latest developments in the cavalry camp. Then said, the masked man who captured you intends to take Todd Raleigh's place. He must be stopped. Well, don't look at me. I'm not mixing with that masked man again. I've had one beaten from That's him. That's point, Shag. He gave you a beating. Go to the marshal and file charges against him for assault and battery and shooting with intent to kill. Gracie's the witness. That evening at dusk, the Lone Ranger, watching from the plateau near his woodland camp, saw Tonto's smoke signal rising from a Canadian mountaintop and knew that the Indians intended to keep their word and were on their way to the border to surrender. The following morning, he rode to the cavalry camp and reported to Colonel Brothers in the headquarters tent. He told about Tonto's signal. The Indians are unarmed. They should arrive this morning. Good. Good. Colonel Brothers. Yes? An advance party, including Sitting Bull and several of these leaders, has entered camp. The outpost reports that the main party of Indians has been sighted approaching the border. I'll await the advance party in front of this tent. Yes, sir. Can you join me outside? Yes, sir. The Lone Ranger and the Colonel, standing in front of the headquarters tent, watched the approaching Indian leaders. Old Sitting Bull looked thin and dispirited. He rode between Toto and Jay Collins. Collins was waiting for them at the border. He'll probably have enough data for his story before you have the chance to speak to Sitting Bull. Toto has been traveling with Sitting Bull. He'll have all the facts. It'll mean a lot to Todd Raleigh if you can beat Collins to the telegraph. I must beat him. Collins will distort the truth. He'll describe Sitting Bull and all other Indians as bloodthirsty savages who want only to raid, plunder, and kill as enemies to be shot on sight. Mm. This is a chance to tell the truth about Indians. Tell how they've been mistreated and misled. Indians are brave and proud, and they'll fight to the death for the things in which they believe. They'll make good citizens, the kind of citizens our nation needs. But they must be met not as enemies, but as friends. People must work with them instead of fighting them. You're right, sir. Now I understand why you must beat Collins to the wire. Yes, and I know the kind of story Todd Raleigh wants. 
As Tonto and Sitting Bull's party halted their horses a short distance away from the headquarters tent, Jay Collins glanced at the Lone Ranger, then spurred yeah, his right. horse and yeah. rode away. He's leaving. He's probably on his way to Uniontown and the telegraph. It was about half an hour later when the Lone Ranger and Toto left the camp. They traveled only a short distance when they saw the marshal from River Bend approaching. He held up a hand to signal a halt. We'll see what the marshal wants closer to home. Hello, fella. Hope to get down well. Very well, marshal. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. You're curious about my mask. That I... mask helps you fit the description of a man I'm looking for. You knock out Shag Morris yesterday on the plateau. Yes, but that... you're the man I want. You're under arrest. Charges assault and battery and shooting with intent to kill. But, marshal. I like your hand. You two, engine. You intend to take us to jail? I'm taking you, and I'll take the engine if he interferes. Shag sworn out a warrant for you. Marshal, I can't take the time to go to jail. I'll identify myself. I have a letter from General Miles, and Colonel Brothers knows me. Doesn't matter who you are. Now listen you're... to me. I must reach the telegraph in Uniontown ahead of a scheming reporter. He's already far ahead of us. Hurriedly, the Lone Ranger told his side of the story. The Marshal listened patiently and looked concerned. Well, I'd let you talk, but nothing you can say will change the fact that my job is to act on this warrant and take you to jail. Now, drop the gun belt and take off that mask. Sorry, Marshal. Hey, what the... The man moved fast. He slapped aside the threatening weapon, then closed in, gripped the lawman's wrist and twisted no. to bring the gun and arm behind the Marshal's back. My arm! Stay back, Toto. I'll handle him. you regret this. Drop the gun. You resist your arrest. Another charge against you. No, my arm! With this grip, I can break your arm. Drop the gun. All right, I dropped it. I'll take it your way. Toto, pick it up. Let me get it. Uh, you... Now, Marshal, I'll show you the letter from General Miles. I'll tell you who I am and why I'm here. The marshal read the letter slowly, and as he read, he muttered, What? Great day. He finished the letter and returned it with a grin. Well, there's no disgrace to be disarmed by you. Fact is, I'm proud to know you. I'll answer Shag's charges, Marshal. But first, I'm going to Uniontown. Think you'll overtake Collins? I don't know. We've lost valuable time. I'll show you a shortcut through the hill. Good. Come on, Tonto. You just get out of the way. Marshal pointed out the route through the mountains, and Silver set the pace. It was a fast ride and a dangerous one, over ground that was badly broken and studded with rocks. But it reduced by several miles the trip to Uniontown. In the Western Union office, the telegraph clicked messages that were of no concern to the operator, who was passing the dull hours by reading a thick book of Grant's memoirs of the Civil War. Hi, Spark. Oh, howdy, Marshal. How are you? A masked man. I'll vouch for him and his Indian friend. Have any reporters been here today? No, no sir. Good, good. We beat Jay Collins. Now, here's a press card. I want to send the story the newspaper mentioned on that card. Well, Then I, uh... collect the press rates. Are you Todd Raleigh? No, he gave me his card so I might act for him. It's all right, Spark. He's going to send the story about sitting bull surrender. Great day. I'll clear the wire. How do you watch for Jay Collins? I don't want to be interrupted. Uh uh-uh. uh. Me do it. I'll guarantee that there'll be no interruption. Let's all set. Transmit as I dictate. Right. Sitting bull and over a thousand dispirited, hungry, and heartbroken Americans today crossed the border and surrendered after years of exile in Canada. The Western Union magic flashed the words of the Lone Ranger across the miles to New York, where the machinery of a great newspaper put them into type for all the nation to read. That's it, Sparks. What a story. Hey, McCormick. Yes? Collins riding this way. Let me look through that window. Yeah, here he comes. (laughs) Being as we left our horses behind the building, he don't know he's been beaten to the wire. Two feller with him. Yeah, shagging greasy. Too bad we can't stop Collins from sending his lying bigoted story. Maybe we can tie up the wire. Sparks, tell the paper there's more to come. Right. You were reading this book, Grant's Memoirs. Send it word for word. Now, over 1,500 pages. Start with page one and keep going until I tell you to stop, for New York refuses to accept any more. Uh, Collins and his friend are dismounting. Where can we get out of sight? The next room, the freight office. Good. Come on, Tonto. Uh, you know what you're doing. Yes, Marshal. Let's leave this door open so we can hear what Collins says. Collins sparks to send Grant's memoirs. After the Battle of Bull Run, a reporter tied up the telegraph wire by having the operator start transmitting the Bible. The New York Herald paid over $3,000 for the toll, but considered the money well spent for an exclusive story of a great event. 
Chief Masabi. Collins, others have come in. Yes. Thanks, Park. I'm Jay Collins of the dispatch. I have the story of City Bull Surrender. Uh, sorry, Mr. Collins, but uh, I'm tied up for the next month or so. I'm sending Grant's memoirs. Are you trying to be funny? I'm telling the truth. Well, my story is going through. Hey, put down that gun. I can handle it, Chief. You take my story or I'll shoot and send it myself. This is the same as a holdup. Hold it what you like. We're back in Collins' spot. You better send his story. Drop your guns. Hey, yes, man. I'll get rid of him for keeping. You're too slow, Collins. Well, that's how he shot away my gun. Want another lesson, Shag? No, no, don't hit me again. My, my hands are up. There's a marshal. And I'm arresting the three of you. You committed a holdup, just as Sparks said, and on railroad property. That's as serious as a train robbery. It means ten years in jail. Ten years. <laughs> That evening in the Army Hospital, the Marshal told Todd Raleigh, who was much improved and resting comfortably, about the day's events. So now Jay Collins, Shag, and Greasy are all in jail. What about the charges against the masked man? Oh, they've been dropped. Oh, by the way, the masked man asked me to return your press card. Here it is. Thanks. Uh, Marshal, didn't Jay Collins send in any story? Not a word, Todd. <laughs> Your paper got more than a scoop. We got an exclusive. Yes, sir. And I reckon you'll receive a bonus for that. No, I didn't earn it. The masked man should get it. It was his story. Oh, he wouldn't take money for saying a good word for the Indian. He's the Lone Ranger. I'll kill the Turn in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, The Short Route. Know what I've got here? Sounds like money, and it is. Matter of fact, I've got a handful of genuine foreign coins. Real money you could spend right now in faraway lands. And here's the best part. All you Wheaties fans can have this wonderful collection of foreign coins for your very own. Just listen. Wheaties is offering two different sets of foreign coins. Fifteen coins in each set. The international set has coins from countries like Finland and Pakistan. The mystery set has coins from places like Monaco and southern Rhodesia. Each set comes in a special coin folder with a map that shows you where the coins are used and information about that country. And each coin has been cleaned and polished. How do you get these genuine foreign coins? Well, for each set, you send us only one Wheaties box top and 25 cents. Look for the directions on the back of Wheaties' special foreign coin packages now at your grocer's. Pick one up and start collecting foreign coins. When the Lone Ranger and Toto tried to prevent an Indian massacre, Toto, unknown to the masked man, was captured by the savages and faced a horrible death. Chilling suspense and fast action make this a story you'll not want to miss. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Charles D. Livingston. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills. Starting May 30th, listen to The Lone Ranger every day, Monday through Friday, on another network. This recorded program came to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.